Okay, here we are in Gaia version 1. So this video is geared towards people that are brand new to the software or maybe have not been using it for a little bit since the early EAP and they want to know how the interface works now. So jumping right into it, we have the recent files. Uh, I've set this up so that it looks like I'm starting for the first time. So I don't have any list of any recent files here but this is where they would show up so you want to jump back into them you would have that you can create a terrain in the graph style the graph style is the most common method to be building things if you've been using tools like world machine before or you've been using tools that are node based like nuke or maya um, houdini you'll be familiar with that kind of workflow Create train by layers. This one works more like a Photoshop layer stacking method. You still have the opportunity to make certain masks, but in terms of connecting, you don't have to connect little wires to connect the nodes or look at it in a graph mode. Um, it's just a stack of layers on the side. Open an existing file, pretty straightforward. Open a quick start. The quick start is a file which will um, give you kind of a little bit of insight into how to create more advanced terrains. Some of the quick starts are simplistic and others are more advanced. The idea here is that you can sort of reverse engineer to get an idea of how you would construct certain types of shapes and forms um, through, through example. You can also create a blank graph. Normally when you create a terrain through this method, it will give you at least three nodes, which would be the mountain, displacement, and the erosion node to give you a good, real solid starting point. Blank graph obviously eliminates those three nodes and just sets you from default. Create new sculpt is setting you into Erosion Studio. Erosion Studio takes mountains that you've created and will allow you to click via a, a, a brush to erode, crack and wear down, add deposits of soil, all in sort of a sculpted kind of environment. So while not sculpting like you would do say in ZBrush, you're sculpting with erosion and soil and cracks and so on and so forth. Let's create a terrain. So this is the basic interface. We can click and drag on any one of these to change the uh, balance between these different zones. We can also go down here to the zoom function and we can drag that uh, up or down in order to change the size of a lot of the elements within the interface. This is good if you have different size monitors um, or you want things to be more visible, say on an instructional video, uh, and you can change the, the size of the screen. Your basic navigation right now is alt navigation. So if you're familiar with Maya style navigation, um, other software users as well, of course, um, Unreal and um, Unity and stuff like that. Uh, so it's just alt, left click and drag. You also have with um, the wheel mouse, you don't need alt for it. Uh, it. It does panning and zooming. So when you run the wheel or click it as a button, you get that. And here it's also working like this with the middle mouse button and the wheel mouse. There's no orbit in here, obviously, so it's relegated to your select button for that purpose. Quickly onto the uh, little menu item here. We have new, which is also here. S uh, startup screen is the screen that we just showed. Um, open, of course, right here, open recent, as well as open and auto save. Uh, the auto save features we'll look at in a moment. Save, save as. So if you want to save the file as a different version, maybe you've made significant modification to it and it's a completely different type of train, but you used one as a starting point, you can go save as. Or if you started from a quick start, but you've made it your own, you can save as. Save will save over the original and you also have the option of incremental save here by clicking the plus, which will take that same save name, but add a number to it, continuously upgrading that number. If we go down here to licenses, licenses, and when you have a licensing problem or you need to install a new license, this is one of the places that you'll uh, work with that. And of course, help and about, exit, typical stuff. Preferences. So a lot of these are just sort of visual in nature. We have the colors, we can change the way that the nodes connect. So that's the style that connects them. We can change the nodes appearance from large. You can play with that if you want. Uh, labels, 
and then we have the ability to optimize for older hardware if there's a, a need for that. This ask before deleting a node, when you grab a node and press delete, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to do that? It's a safety feature. If it annoys you, of course, turn it off. Viewport, you have your alt mouse. You can change that if you want. Um, just a few options here. Change the high quality. You have the quality of the viewport. And then, of course, the style of viewport. If you want it embedded, which it is right now, this is the viewport right here. Floating, if you want to drag it to another window, or if you want to drag it to another window and make sure it's always sitting on top, you can do that as well. You can also invert the Y direction on the mouse. Build. This section is fairly important for some people working in environments, work environments where you don't have full control. If you do not have full control, it is advisable that you change the locations of these. Change them to another drive, uh, one that you have proper access to. So even though you may think you have control over you know, your user documents, uh, in some environments you don't have absolute control and so this can affect the uh, build of assets. So if you're finding that you're not getting stuff out of Gaia, it's not building correctly, change these to an alternative location and uh, it may work better. So for example, I have a D drive which I have full access to at work. I'll change these to that D drive and everything will build there instead. These preferences, uh, these don't affect your final build. They are just sort of default starting points. So if you have a mode that you want to use all the time, you can set these up as that. But when you get to the build, you can choose these yourself so it really doesn't um, have a huge impact. A few other settings. Uh, I like to send the anonymous usage data. It helps them improve the software and costs you very little. It's not like they're you know, selling your stuff to anybody or whatnot. Uh, they're, they're a good crew, so I, I feel it's important to help them out, but that's up to you. The uh, autosave when performing major op options, or sorry, operations. Um, what can happen, of course, is with any software, it's made by humans. We're not, you know, infallible. And uh, the end result is sometimes bugs. And what this does is it will uh, save as you go along and you can then load an, load an autosave. If it's crashed on you, you didn't have an opportunity to save properly. You also have the option to do a little house cleaning where if it's been doing autosaves for a while and you haven't been using them, um, it, it deletes them. So if they've been uh, beyond 90 days and you haven't gone back to them, chances are you're not gonna go back to them. It'll delete them for you. And then check for updates on startup. Obviously you want that. You want the new version with all the bug fixes and the cool new features. So you're probably gonna keep that. Okay, here's the title of what I'm working on. Uh, currently untitled. Once I save this, it'll change to the name of whatever that is. We have our preview resolution, which we can change up to 4K. And the preview resolution is not the build resolution, but it is important to you with regards to the build resolution. Some of the nodes are a little bit more resolution dependent. The detail which is offered in the low res is nothing compared to the high resolution detail, and so the look can be significantly different. Uh, before you do a build, it might be an idea to switch your preview to a higher resolution to get a better understanding of what it may look like. We have our current viewport mode, which is this one right here, and uh, uh, so it's you know just basic alt navigation. If we switch to this one, little running man here, uh, we have the right mouse button, which changes the lighting position a little bit. It doesn't move the sun, but it changes the lighting position. And then we have the W, A, S, D, and then the Q and E buttons in order to navigate through this space. So very similar uh, to say navigating in uh, sort of a first person kind of game mode, which also works in tools like Unreal. So you can uh, use the left mouse button to uh, first person move the camera and then just kind of fly around your terrain to look at it. This is good for an option for doing screen grabs, uh, screen captures of things so that uh, you can uh, share it. So you can take screenshots or you can just hit print screen and, and paste it in something like Photoshop. Next we have the 2D view, which is um, 
sort of an orthographic view of the lit terrain. Then we also have a separate option box, which brings up the height map information or, or 2D information that's being stored and what will be baked out. This, of course, can be shared amongst the different modes that are here. So this is just sort of an optional side viewport that you can have open or not. We have the undo feature. This is listed as experimental for the moment because in some cases it will not work, but ultimately um, it, it does perform fairly well. It's just your regular kind of control Z uh, functionality. Materials, there are currently three in previous EAPs, there has been more, there may be more in the future, but there are just three different shading models for now. We also have control over the sun, so we can do things like change the brightness and change the ambient, which would be the ambient light stuff produced by the sky dome. Then controlling the position of the light in the sky, we have the azimuth and altitude. The azimuth is the north, south, east, west direction of the sun, and then the altitude is it you know high in the sky or is it down on the horizon. Aerial perspective is your volumetric aspect, so it's sort of a volumetric fog. It's the reason why mountains far off the distance turn kind of like a bluish color. That controls that, how much of it we see. Because these are not quickly and easily um, reset, you should keep track of them if you want them to go back to their defaults. Uh, but you can you can change these and it's fine. You can also uh, click directly in here and change the position um, um, to your heart's content. Switching the water level, we can turn water on, which immediately provides us with water. And then the water level is just a click and drag kind of function that you can change the height of the water. Turn it back off. We have the scale of the world, and so there's some information here. Again, if you change these, keep track of what the values are because you will want to change them back. So we have you know, 2,600 and 5,000 here. You can set those back. We have the build operator, and this is probably the one of the more important tools that you will need to be familiar with. Uh, this build manager brings up a separate panel that, uh, again, based on the settings that we established earlier, there's the, the um, base things, and even though it was set to EXR, because I didn't set it to that, um, it's jumping to PNG, um, which you can just switch to EXR if you want. And then you have additional options after build what to do. I don't have any of these currently saved, so nothing is showing up, and that basically refers to uh, right-clicking or storing them, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So you have options here, then you start build, you got your resolution, and it will bake them out. You also have option for uh, baking certain nodes, nodes that are currently selected. So you can bake the selected or unbake the selected, and that kind of locks them into uh, their current mode so that um, they, don't, uh, they don't update. This will simply take you, the, the build stack is actually the folder where things have been built to. They will normally be built to where you tell them to be built under the, the settings uh, or where you saved it. And so that's just gonna open up that window so you don't have to go hunting for it. You click it, where did it build it to? Click this button, file uh, folder will open up and you'll see them all. Resource manager, where are you getting your resources from? We'll talk more about those in uh, another video. And then we have cancel the running process. So if you're not sure if it's taking too long or if it's crashed, you can click this button. Same with the one beside it, which is to suspend the engine. Um, this is a simple toggle button to suspend and unsuspend the engine. And that's to help you uh, stop everything if you're in a state of panic and you want to quickly save because you're not sure you're going to be able to do that. Um, keeping in mind that auto saves happen every once in a while when you make major changes, so you may not have lost anything to begin with. We have the properties panel, and the properties panel works based on what it is you are currently selecting. The uh, options for these panels will change based on these things, but one thing in particular is this auto apply and apply button, which are uh, only available on nodes which are a little bit more 
um, CPU intensive. They require more time to calculate. And they may also have a number of different things that you may want to change all at the same time. So if I wanted to adjust duration, rock softness, and strength all at one go, if it was set to auto apply, each time I change one of these, it was going to uh, change the, uh, the, the render, and I'd have to wait for it to go through that. Um, again, if we're dealing with high resolutions, which I'm not right now, but if I was dealing with high resolutions, that could be kind of sluggish and a waste of my time. So by setting it like this, I can change whatever I want, and then once I've done all the changes that I wanted to change, I can hit the apply button, and off I go. For other nodes where that is not an issue, they're pretty much real time regardless of resolution, or they're just at least very fast, they didn't require that, so that's not there. What they do all have though, typically speaking, is things like auto level, invert, bias gain, and clamp, ways of quickly editing the output from that given node. Moving along to this panel here, we have commonly used nodes, things that uh, were um, sort of favorites or things that you most likely will want to make use of. Uh, you can of course them get, get them from here and you'll notice that some of these are highlighting in brighter colors. These ones are those that have been recently modified or added to them so that you know what's new. And we can of course uh, filter things. So if I wanted erosion, I just start typing erosion and it filters that down. I can just backspace that out or press the X to get out of it. I can also over here hit tab and tab will do the same thing, erosion, and then I'll be able to select them very quickly. In this interface, we can right click to uh, quickly access a lot of these things in a list form as well, as well as right click on nodes to get specific things like renaming them, duplicating them, tell them to refresh, maybe that they're, they're not showing the right data, you want them to, to load and calculate again. Um, how you want them to show, uh, typically speaking, we have some options over here as well. Uh, if you want to bypass them, meaning basically ignore this, so keep the connections that are here, but just ignore this one for now and see what happens with that. Like, what does it look like if I ignore it? I don't want to disconnect it. We can pin a node, and so pinning a node, um, you'll notice if I click on each one of these, you notice that the terrain changes. If I wanted to go to this one, but then change values over here and see how they ended up over there, rather than changing them, clicking back, checking, oh yeah, okay, going back over here, changing it, clicking back and checking again, you can pin these. So I can press F to pin it or right click and pin it. And now when I click on this, you notice this doesn't change, but the panels do. And so as I make alterations here, they'll update directly in that node. To unpin something, simply press F again, or you can unpin it using the unpin button or right click functionality again. We have the pin for color, which is also right here. And what this is, is uh, when you're dealing with textures, doing the texturing portion of this, you'll have color information coming from certain nodes, which could be plugged into other height information. So let's say you're taking a Perlin noise to generate an interesting color pattern on a surface. You don't want to see that Perlin noise. You want to see this eroded mountain, right, with that colored uh, information. So you can say, pin this for color. When I'm dealing with color, I want to see this one. Of course, with a lot of those nodes, you'll plug this one into their visualization output, which will override that anyways. So it's just an option that you have. Right click again, we have mark for export. In previous versions of the EAP, this was the save function. This basically tells it, hey, this thing right here, I wanna export it when I'm, when I'm ready to build. And uh, when you go to build manager, it will show up there. So if I right click and say mark for export, and we go up to the build manager, you'll see that it shows up here. And I've got the options of what I want to output it as, what I want to name it as, and it's going to create all those different things. For every output that you see here, you'll have an option to have an output directly. And as you add more to them, they'll show up in the list. If you don't want something to be outputted, again, it's toggle, just right click and off you go. We can of course delete or we can press the delete key. 
and we also have the option of deleting it via this button here. With these panels here, we also have reset node to default. So if you made some changes and you didn't like the changes, you don't want to kind of start again from front, uh, fresh. You don't have to just grab a new one and reconnect it. You can grab this one and reset it to its defaults. So that, and then we have the mark for selected, which is there, the pin features. And then we have the toggle train and mass display, which you saw in the right click function as well. And that's because the uh, going between a train versus a mass display masks shows the black and white masking features that are there. The 2D view, which we see over here is also down here. We also have the option of um, selecting the descendants. So if I grab this one and I wanna grab the ones that are next to it, I can select the descendants. We got that there. We also have the uh, auto layout, which will rearrange the layout of all the, uh, the um, items. Let's grab those auto layout and it will relay out and focus in on them. If we select multiple uh, things, we can hit the auto connect button. So it can work with large numbers. Um, if I do two, it will connect just those two. delete that. If I do three, it'll connect those two and then connect those two into the last one. If I press shift delete, it no longer asks me. So that other feature that was in the menu up there, we don't necessarily need. Okay. Uh, last but not least, of course, is this row right here. So what we have are the mutate seed. So the mutate seed, what this one does is if you notice in each one of these, there is a seed value. If uh, I have this mountain one here and you go ahead and input this 4743 and make sure your other settings are the same, your mountain should look pretty much like my mountain. So by mutating the seeds, what you do is it will take all of these and it will mutate them so that you can take the same kind of mountain. So if I build a really nice, cool, snowy, rocky mountain, I like the style of it and I want to make another mountain that's going to sit in beside it, maybe making an entire mountain range, um, mountain by mountain, uh, I can do that. I can go ahead and say, you know what, mutate all the seeds. It's going to create another mountain that's very similar to this one, but looks different. And uh, once you mutate the seeds, of course, you're going to have to refresh them. So it forces a refresh on all nodes. So it rebuilds all those nodes together. You can also do this if for whatever reason you feel all the nodes do need to be refreshed or you can refresh them individually as we've seen right here, where we can refresh or press F5 for them. We also have um, if uh, navigation in this style is not appealing to us, we can click on this magnifying glass, which gives us a pan feature and a zoom in and zoom out um, functionality. Clicking that again will close that panel. And then of course, if things are kind of not framed properly, you click this button, it will quick, quickly frame in on them. So uh, a very last thing is the graph versus layers mode. You can quickly go into either mode. So if you started in graph and you decide, you know what, actually I wanted to work with layers, you can switch to that mode, should you desire. We also have the ability to save that current workspace. And we also have a um, little script editor, uh, which will be reserved for uh, potential later use for power users. I believe the last thing that we didn't really look into was creating a preset or importing a preset onto any node. So if you have a cool preset that, you know, these settings really are awesome all the time. I really love these settings. You can store those in settings and then call them back as you desire. So hopefully this video has been fairly informative. Um, it's longer than I normally would have, but in order for you to have a, a fresh idea of all the tools that are here, um, that's it. So in the next videos, we're going to go through different sections and talk about the, uh, the tools that are in here. And um, we'll look at ways of making very specific types of terrains for uh, future videos. That's it.